This is Saturday School at the Institute, a weekly post of Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute, located in Burlington, North Carolina. This is a continuation of the topic, Jesus Heals the Man with the Withered Hand. This is part number two. This miracle is one of the 15 miracles of Jesus, which we are covering in this fourth season of Saturday School. We will look at the text and then get a greater revelation of this miracle. In part one of the lesson, we introduce the scriptures recorded in the Synoptic Gospels concerning the healing of a man with a withered hand. We provided extensive background into the backdrop of this account in which it was obvious that the Pharisees were plotting to trap Jesus concerning the Sabbath laws. In part two, we will draw out some points about the miracle and the actions taken by Jesus and of the Pharisees as a result of Jesus' actions. We will then wrap up this lesson and prepare for the next one, which will be Lazarus being raised from the dead. Let's now explore the We can graphically look at this miracle in the sequence chart which is provided. The flow of the timeline goes from left to right and starts here in which Jesus and his disciples are tested about working on the Sabbath day. Jesus then expounds the true meaning of the Sabbath and silences his accusers, which were the Pharisees. Then Jesus goes into the synagogue on the following Sabbath. And the Bible says he taught the people. Then the Pharisees challenged him again, this time about healing on the Sabbath. They went through a little bit of dialogue, then Jesus asked the man to come forth. He comes forward and is healed. His hand is made whole at the commandment of Jesus Christ. The Pharisees get angry and seek to kill Jesus, but they have to find another way to do it because nothing Jesus did would allow them to condemn him to death. And then, of course, Jesus departs, goes into another place, knowing that the Pharisees and the Herodians were plotting to kill Jesus. As we deep dive into this text, want to take some time to look at the lead up into the miracle. Because as we have read, as all three gospel writers in the synoptic gospels stated, this situation and this miracle was not solely about the man who was healed or his condition, but it was concerning this dispute between Jesus and the Pharisees. So as already indicated, Jesus had recently entered into a dispute with the Pharisees concerning the Sabbath, and we will look at that. If we look at Matthew chapter number 12, verse one through seven, um, we will see that Jesus and his disciples were picking corn to eat on the Sabbath. I want to go there for a moment, read the scripture, and then we'll come back to this slide. 
The scripture is broken down into bullet points just for clarity. And we will read as recorded from the King James Version of the Bible. The Bible says, At that time Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered, and began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was in hunger, and they were with him? How he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them that were with him, but only the priests. Or have ye not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priest in the temple profane the temple and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye will not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. We'll go back to the previous slide. As shown in the background of the Pharisees, which we covered in part one, they were not strict followers of the Torah, as the Sadducees were. Knowing that, this occasion was obviously just one more reason to try to get them to trick Jesus into saying something in hopes of condemning him. Jesus knew the law because he was the one who gave Moses the law in the first place. His answers left them speechless and without ammunition to kill Jesus. This is when they were in the field and his disciples were plucking ears of corn. So this is a prelude to the situation that we read in which the man's hand is healed by Jesus. On the following Sabbath day, the Bible says, Jesus came to the synagogue and he taught. The Pharisees obviously saw the man with the withered hand in which they used his situation as an opportunity to trap Jesus. They somehow considered healing as being the same as work, which was prohibited on the Sabbath day. They asked Jesus the question anyhow, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Nothing in the law of God prohibits healing or even mentions healing as a part of the Sabbath day. But they equated healing with work in order to trap Jesus and to condemn him. And when we speak of condemnation, it's not just an oral judgment, but execution being put to death for violation of the Sabbath. In response, Jesus asked the Pharisees several questions about the application of the Sabbath law. When they had nothing to say, they kept silence, knowing the purpose of their initial question. This is where we get into the miracle. Now, after this monologue by Jesus, he calls the man forward. Bible does not associate a name with him. We don't know how long this man was in the condition he was in, but he had a withered hand and a functioning hand. Part of him was dysfunctional. The other part of him was functional. The Bible also doesn't explain how he lost this function, but it had to be either through muscular, skeletal, or neurological deficiency. 
In all three cases, the hand gets atrophy and slowly loses its function over time. When he called the man forward, he did not touch him, but simply told him to stretch forth his withered hand. And the man had enough faith to obey Jesus. I want you to understand he was there for the discussion. He heard everything that the Pharisee said. He probably heard everything that Jesus said. And when Jesus commanded him to come forward, he came forward. And when Jesus commanded him to stretch forth his hand, that is what he did. Now, he was not capable of doing this prior to Jesus commanding him. Why is this important? This is important because he had a part to play in his miracle. We find this in several cases in the Gospels and in the book of Acts, where the person who receives the miracle takes active part in the miracle. Jesus could have simply touched him and he would have been healed. And he still would not have been in violation of the Sabbath law. But he knew the people he was dealing with and the situation he was dealing with. So he just simply commanded the man, stretch forth his hand, O oh, glory to God. And the man was healed. In so much that the Bible says that his hand became whole like the other. So he went from being partially, partially functional to being completely functional. And his miracle came as a result of his decision to obey Jesus' command. The Pharisees, in response to this miracle, were forced to abandon their strategy and to regroup with the Herodians to come up with something else because Jesus healed the man, showing that he was Lord and he did not violate the Sabbath for two reasons. Number one, because healing was not prohibited by the law in the first place on the Sabbath. And the second thing is Jesus didn't touch him, so they could not prove that he did anything besides command the man to stretch forth his hand. And they would not have had an explanation, a reasonable explanation of this other than he was the Christ, which they did not want to do. Sabbath was not the real concern of the Pharisees, nor the healing of the man. Their concern was creating a scenario in which they could trap Jesus with the expectation of him being condemned to death. Sabbath was, however, a legal, um, legitimate law given by Israel or given to Israel by God. The penalty for violating the Sabbath was death. Jesus never contradicted this fact. He consented to this fact. His issue with the Pharisees surrounded their misapplication of the law of God, not the fact of the law of God. And they misapplied it in two ways. First, they stated things under the law or gave a scope of what work meant on the Sabbath day, which was not given by Moses in the first place. The work that Moses was describing was simple work as labor. However, we find this man um, who was indeed in need of a miracle standing in between these opposing forces. You have Jesus, the Christ, who is the legitimate heir of the kingdom of Israel, being the son of David. Being the one who God 
had foreordained to Abraham as being the seed whereby the nations of the world shall be blessed. He, we have the Lord of all, the creator of all things, the brightness of the image of God, God manifest in the flesh, whom Isaiah prophesied and said, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which by interpretation means one of God with us. We have this man who is both man and God within one vessel, standing flat footed to the opposition of the Pharisees. Jesus was not a pacifist. We need to get rid of that notion. Jesus was not a pacifist. He stood up. He held his ground against this group of individuals. The man's name is not mentioned, but he had enough faith in the authority of Jesus to obey him. This is significant because the Pharisees, in a lot of cases, um, were the rulers of the synagogue, and they were the religious authority in that setting. But we see Jesus claiming his authority and rightly claiming his authority. And the man responded by obeying the voice of Jesus. So he simply, not so simply, but simply stretches forth this hand, which he was not able to use. A withered hand means that he cannot straighten it out or sometimes even move the fingers and the bones and the muscles and the nerves in the hands. Amen. And he went to do what he was not able to do on his own, but through the commandment of Jesus, we see his hand starting to straight out, his bones being corrected, muscles beginning to become active again and some maybe even be built again. We're seeing neurons and nerves beginning to heal instantly at his obedience to Jesus and his hand was made whole. I believe that man went home with such a testimony. And I'm sure there were a lot of questions surrounding this man because he was a member of the synagogue and he was healed. What the Pharisees tried to use as a plot to destroy Jesus created an opportunity for which this man's life was changed. We too, we too can take a lesson from this man that obedience will create healing, supernatural events in our lives in these contemporary times. There can be things that are dysfunctional even within our own lives. And his withered hand can represent many things. And his good hand could represent many things. And sometimes we don't need a complete healing. We need a partial healing. Sometimes it's not everything. It's just a part of us that is not functioning. And so we too in obedience understanding the authority that Jesus has and our, uh, the, how we have to obey Jesus when he commands us to do something. If we would obey his voice, do what he tells us to do, we will see supernatural events and power come in our lives. This concludes part two of our lesson.
Now let us proceed to bring it all home. Now let's bring it home. This concludes part two of the lesson concerning Jesus' healing of the man with the withered hand. The miracle was much bigger than the man. The Pharisees misapplied a legitimate law of God in attempts to condemn him. Although this condition was being taken advantage of by the Pharisees, in order to create an opportunity to destroy Jesus. Through his obedience, Jesus brought forth his healing. By doing so, Jesus did not violate the Sabbath by healing this man or by healing anyone else. The Pharisees had to retreat and find another plot to condemn Jesus. Jesus is indeed the Lord of the Sabbath. Although we are under the dispensation of grace and we are not under the sabbatical laws, we are under the Sabbath of grace. So let us walk therein. And this is the conclusion of the two part lesson concerning the healing of the man with the withered hand. In the next lesson, we will discuss the resurrection of Lazarus. Read St. John chapter number 11, verse 1 through 46 in preparation. Thank you for watching this video. Please give us a review on Google, Facebook, and YouTube. If you like these videos, if they are blessing you, please share them. Once again, this is Saturday School. Please consider supporting us at Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute. You can donate via Cash App at dollar sign Refuge Temple NC Bible, or you can go to our website and donate in that fashion. If you would like for us to cover a topic or answer a question through the Saturday School platform, please submit your questions or your comments to Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute Facebook page. You can either put it as a post or you can message us. You can go to the Twitter handle shown below or to our website and post there as well. God's blessings upon everyone. We encourage you to become a lifelong learner of the Word of God. And at Refuge Temple NC Bible Institute, we endeavor to provide biblical instruction to everyday people. Godspeed and Shalom.